Hello once again and welcome to SIM301. In this one we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some of the dynamic OCR techniques and things like dictionary and template matching that, that are available in Simple Index. We've touched on this a little bit before in one of the earlier uh, OCR videos and we're just going to take things a little further this time. Once again I'm going to be using the read invoices with his own OCR job that is included with the samples that install with Simple Index. And let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, job options on this one. Just talk about a few things before we get into some of the more advanced techniques. Um, for starters, we've talked about the template field, but you can do multiple templates. So, for example, with this order number that's on the invoices, let's go look at that invoice real quick. Pop that open. So the order number right here is a six-digit number. And then we have a customer order number over here so that's a five-digit number. And that's the way these templates are configured back here in Simple Index. So we've got our uh, six-digit number for the order number right here. But let's, let's assume that sometimes we're getting in a mixture of uh, orders, uh, order numbers, actually. So in, they can be six digits, they can be five digits. So when I want to take care of that, I can uh, put in my six-digit template, six pound signs, and then I can put a pipe character, just the vertical bar, um, and then I can do one, two, three, four, five pound signs. And so now I'm looking for six digits or five digits. And careful thing to take note of here, whenever you're using this type of template, you want to put your larger quantity first. So I want to look for the six digit number before I look for the five digit number. Because if we did really have a six digit number, but we only had, we had the five digit template coming first, it would see those first five digits of that six digit number and think that it found a match and go ahead and return that result and it would leave a character off. So just remember start with your uh, your largest numbers and then work down uh, to your smaller numbers. Alright, so that's multiple template formats. We can have multiple templates uh, per item, per index field, um, just depending on what the type of data that we're looking for is. Let's go over here to the zones an OCR tab and we'll talk about some more things that we can we can do here. If you remember when we talked about this job before, or we'll just review here, with the with the company field, we're actually using a list to compare that to. It's just a regular TXT file. If I hit edit here, we can open it up and you'll see it's just a list of the various vendors that I might be getting invoices from. You'll see the tech type interfaces is the first one, which is the that particular invoice that we have in the input folder right now. Um, you can use that field to define that list. That, that's called a dictionary match. You're giving it a list of possible terms and it just looks for a uh, specific value that's on that list. The list could also be a, a column in a database, for example. So if we were doing that, we would have uh, our, our database set up back here with our various connections uh, over on the database tab. And then in your zones and OCR field, instead of putting a path to a text file here, you would literally just have a, uh, a table name and a field name. So it might look something like, um, let's say that's the, uh, it's our accounting table. And then we would have a pipe there. So accounting pipe companies would uh, then tell us to look in that table followed by that field in that table. Let's look for all of its matches there. Um, so we can do that. Let's take right now just to kind of, uh, we're going to run that job real quick. It's just got one invoice in it, so we're going to take a look at how it works. So if I click Run Job here, it's going to load in that document, go through and do its OCR on the on the fields, and bring everything. So we see it loaded in the account number, tech type interfaces was a company on that list, and then we also got our order number pulled in. I'm just going to bail out of this one, which we can do with uh, Control N just to end the job. Yes, I want to do that. So let's take it a step further. Let's go back and look at those job options. And let's take that dictionary matching one step further. For the sake of argument, let's say that um, whenever we see tech type interfaces, well, we refer to them in our accounting software and through all of our business rules as TTI. That's just how they're used. Well, I can actually set up what we call a thesaurus match, very much like a dictionary match, just adds an extra step. So if I go back in to edit this document, right here on the tech type interfaces line, I can add a term that um, 
I want to use whenever I see. So this is how we do our uh, the source matching. So whatever term comes first, so in this case TTI, is the one that's going to populate the index field. Any terms that come after that are the ones that you're going to search for to find that match. So if I see the term tech type interfaces, I'll put TTI. If I see, let's say it's occasionally just tech TI, might be a shorthand that's used on some documents. And that would also be a valid res uh, match, and it would return TTI as the... Uh, as the index option. So I'm going to save that change here. We'll just get this out of our way. Go back to my job. Let's run it again. And so you can see we now got TTI in the blank where once before it said tech type interfaces. Not because TTI is on the page, but because it read tech type interfaces and then made that synonym substitution and put TTI in the box for us. Another scenario where you might use the same thing, let's say that uh, for whatever reason the invoice is coming in uh, from that vendor and every time it gets read uh, a character is uh, just misread. The, the E in tech type interfaces gets read as an A so it says tack type. We could just as easily put tack type interfaces in our thesaurus matching, just one of those terms after a pipe. And so when it saw tech type, it would replace it with the correct thing, tech type, or TTI, as we've done in this example. So there's lots of ways you can use that synonym matching. It's not just for, uh, you know, when you want to use a different term. It can also be used to, to correct for a spelling error. Now along those lines, there's another way we could take care of that spelling error. Let's go back to our zones in OCR. Let's make sure we've got company chosen as our field we're working with. We have some options down here to uh, strip characters from the result or to replace characters. So using my example again, let's say that for whatever reason that A is always, that E is always being read as an A. I could say when you see an A, strip it out, replace it with an E. And it would do the same thing there. Now the difference is it's going to do it to everything. So even in the word interfaces, the A would be, be substituted with an E. And so you have to be careful about that. So sometimes doing it with the dictionary matching is preferred, but if it's globally, if, if E's are always being misread as A's, you can take care of it this way uh, f for that particular field that we've got there. Uh, along those same lines, we also have, uh, sometimes you'll have issues with spaces causing problems. Um, what appears to us maybe is, is three spaces on the page, and we've set a template to look for space, 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 and then a term. Uh, can actually just be read as one space or, or maybe more spaces by uh, by the OCR because OCR you know it doesn't really know how wide a space should be um, so if you use the strip spaces from result it'll take out all the spaces before it looks for a match to your template or to your dictionary so with our tech type interfaces example I could take I could tell it to strip the spaces and then in my dictionary I would have the phrase tech type interfaces as one word and it would find a match based on that the next option down there, strip fixed characters in front of template, or the one after that, strip fixed characters at end of template. That means um, back over here, let's say that uh, we always have the phrase order colon comes before the order number. Now that's not what happens on this page. We've seen it's an order number that's above the number, but, but just for example, let's say that it says order colon and then there's a six digit number. And doing something like this, we can say look for the term order and then if you see it with six digits after it, that's the result I'm looking for. And that's useful when you have a lot of text kind of bunched very close together. Maybe there's uh, two six digit numbers right one above and below each other and we want to make sure we get that exact one and our, and our zone is kind of oversized to allow for so shifting on the pages, well, we can make sure we get the one next to the term order by putting in this match here. So it'll look for the word order, then it'll look for six digits, and it'll return those six digits. Well, when I go over here and I check my strip fixed characters in front of template, all I'll get back in my index field is the six digit order number. If I weren't to check that, I would actually get the whole phrase order colon followed by six digits. So, the, so, the, so those are considered fixed characters. They're characters that are always present on the page, and we want to use them to make sure we're finding the right result, but we don't want them to appear in our index field. And then lastly, I want to talk about two more things having to do with uh, character substitution. Um, in the strip characters, when I use the example of putting an A and then replacing it with an E, well, there's also some predefined uh, options in there. So we can, we can remove line feeds, 
if you're having a situation where the text that you want to match with comes above the um, the actual value you're trying to read, like with our, our example here where order number is above, um, there would be order number, a line feed, and then a six-digit number. So I could tell it to remove line feeds, and then it would put order number, it would put the number right up next to the phrase order number, and I could uh, I could then make a match that way. Same thing here, you can remove tabs. Uh, and we also have some, some presets in here for removing all the lowercase, uh, all the letters basically, and then all the numbers. Uh, you might use that in situations where um, a word like a an O, a capital O in a word is consistently getting read as a zero, and we know it's always going to be a, a, a phrase that doesn't have any numbers in it, so we can remove all numbers. Uh, and then it wouldn't do any matching uh, against the numbers. Um, or we could, you know, again, use the example of just one character. We could do remove zeros, substitute those, kind of the same idea. And then we have uh, for the different uh, operators on the keyboard and even some of the, the strange ways that A's and E's might get read as, as like foreign characters. Um, so that's there. And then the last thing is this character substitution panel over here. And here, I can, uh, th th these are global, so this is going to apply to the entire document, not just to the field that we're working on. So I can hit Add here, and if I see the uh, LMNOP, and then I replace it with QRSTV. Okay. And you see that gets added to my list, and I can just keep doing that, keep hitting Add, 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 and each time just take a pair take a, a group of letters that I want to get rid of and then tell what I want to replace them with and same thing if you need to edit that I can go and hit remove and take that right back off so there you have it that's kind of the high points of uh, doing character substitution doing thesaurus matching how yeah, we can use it to standardize uh, spell spellings or standardize the appearance of, of certain text um, and then we also talked about doing multiple templates there at the beginning. So if you ever have any questions about this, of course, just always contact us on the support line. We're always happy to help. And uh, thanks for watching.